more daunting than a blank canvas. Uh, today's uh, painting, we're gonna work on this photograph that I took in Oaxaca, Mexico. And I love the intensity of the blue sky against this church steeple. So I decided I'm probably gonna add some pigeons or some type of birds to it, but I just loved, loved the contrast and intensity of color. So this is where we're starting with a basically a blank canvas. This is an 18 by 24 linen, oil prime linen canvas. And this should be fun. So let's see where this goes. Hey everybody, I'm Suzanne. And if you're like me and struggle with perspective, well, <laughs> then this is a video for you. You don't usually see me paint a lot of buildings, but in today's video, we're going to go ahead and paint this. This is the Sangre de Cristo Church in Oaxaca, Mexico. And um, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the day that I saw this, the sky was this intense. It was truly absolutely beautiful. And I've been inspired to paint it. This was just something I wanted to do and I hopefully did it justice. Now, I'm an animal science person. You know I like painting animals, wildlife management, all that good stuff. I love painting animals. And, but <laughs> the original photograph, and I'll show you, the, the original photograph is uh, right here. Uh, you can see it right here. Um, it didn't have birds in it, but I opted to pu put the pigeons in for several reasons. One, I wanted to diffuse the actual concept of the building and hopefully Pigeons to the Rescue disguise some of my flaws that I may have done with my uh, really shaky perspective. Um, so there you go. I'm using Pigeons to hide my flaws. So yeah, hide behind the birds. That's what I'm doing here. And this is just a perfect example of why I should be painting more perspective type works of buildings and that sort of thing just so I can actually get better at it, right? So sit back, let's go ahead and jump in to the painting of the Sangre de Cristo Church in Oaxaca. I start in by just doing a very loose sketch. I had previously done a pencil sketch trying to get my angles right, but know that I struggle, struggle with perspective. And once I feel pretty confident that I've got a, you know, a pretty good, uh, sketch in, then I'm going to go ahead and paint my background. You can see my reference there on the uh, left of the actual photo that I took in Oaxaca. And uh, so I'm kind of looking, you know, constantly looking at my source here and just, you know, occasionally checking the uh, angles. Now the colors that I'm going, it just looks like um, kind of a, a cerulean blue, but it's actually cerulean blue with cobalt at the top and a thalo zinc white by Michael Harding. Um, on the lower part and I added a little titanium white so that it's a little lighter at the horizon. Now I'm scratching in with my paint scraper just where I think some of my uh, pigeons are going. So again I <laughs> I gotta have some wildlife. Some of the colors that I've laid down right now for the actual church is I have yellow ochre by Blue Ridge this is Pale Violet by Michael Harding, Titanium White by Windsor Newton, and uh, Payne's Gray by Windsor Newton. Then up here, I've got Burnt Sienna, Michael Harding. Um, that is Venetian Red, Michael Harding. This is Mars Red by Blue Ridge, and a little Ivory Black by um, Michael Harding. And, I kind of separated them out because based on my reference here, I've got a lot of the reds up here. So all those reds that I threw down are all for this kind of work. And then the um, all the, the other colors <laughs> are basically for what I see happening here in the rest of the church. Now, the sky that you saw me laying down quickly was... Um, I basically went over the whole thing with a, a straight cerulean, just straight cerulean blue. And then I actually used um, phthalo blue and zinc by Michael Harding, kind of on the whole bottom part. And there's a little bit more opacity just based on the fact that you're adding white. And then after afterwards, I actually took straight cobalt blue and started putting mixing it in up here just to give it a little bit more depth. Now I will obviously have to go over with a lot more um, uh, paint 
just because I need this to be completely opaque. And I'm starting to scratch out some pigeons that I want to put in here. And I just wanted to, you know, th this is always subject to change because I kind of feel my way through the composition. Uh, know that I struggle greatly with perspective. So this should be an interesting piece. Now going in and actually painting um, the church. And I'm starting with that, that spire. I'm working from the top to the bottom, basically. And I'm putting in my darker values. And I'm using a combination of the um, Mars red and ivory black to do my darkest values up there. So I, I constantly have to check and recheck and check, check again to make sure that my perspective is, is pretty good pretty close and whenever I feel like I'm veering off I try to make another correction no folks that I struggle with perspective for some reason it's just my <laughs> it's just my nemesis but I'm working it and um, you know every now and then go back check make sure my lines are straight um, all that good stuff but you know I'm working from basically top to bottom and I'm just laying in the colors my uh, light source it's 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 whiter on the very front of the building. It's a little cooler on the left side. So I am adjusting my values and my temperature of my paints um, slightly. It's it's very subtle, but I, I know that that's, that's where the light seems to be different. So, um, so I cool it down on the left side. So you can see it's slightly darker. Uh, it was a, it was pretty much uh, probably 10 o'clock in the morning, 10, 11 o'clock maybe when I took the photo. So the sun was rather high. And uh, you can see from the shadows underneath the ledges there, there's a little bit more of a shadow. So the sun was pretty high. And uh, so of course knowing where your light source is important. Cheers y'all, nothing goes down better while painting a Oaxacan church scene, then a little sip of mezcal. This was late in the afternoon and I was celebrating just a tiny bit. Now it's time to start laying in the pigeons. And again, as I said, this is somewhat of a forced perspective in that I wanted to give the illusion, you know, I wanted the birds to be coming down, uh, flying down from the sky. So I you know, start with my pigeons rather small, and as they get, come closer to the ground and closer to the viewer, the pigeons get larger. So, uh, you know, I'm just being very loose with this, and I don't have to put detail in the pigeons in the background. I'm using a combination of um, Doxazine Purple, um, then I have Payne's Gray and a little Raw Umber and Titanium White is basically the overall co um, colors that I'm choosing to do my pigeons. And of course, pigeons come in all different colors, but I made mine pretty uniform and just making them gray pigeons, just your standard um, rock dove look here. But they're, uh, they're going in and, uh, you know, I'll, I'll have a whole flock before too long.
I think it's important when putting in pigeons like this and, and trying to create more depth. Uh, you know, obviously I'm adjusting the size, so it's important to overlap. So you can tell the bird in the foreground that's overlapping the two in the background is going to be a little bit larger and so on. So as I move through all the pigeons, I am adjusting the size. Now I have some references of just different pigeons. And of course, all the pigeons that I have in my references are basically the same size. So I have to adjust in my mind, you know, this one will be a little bit smaller than the one in front and so on. So I have to adjust the size and adjust the value as well, because it's going to become a lot more intense as it gets closer to us. So you'll see that each pigeon will have, as it gets closer, it gets a little bit more detail as well. Now this pigeon will be my largest pigeon, so it will have the most detail and I'm being very careful trying to make sure that I uh, um, basically get all the feathers and the wings correct, etc. The, all the, all the uh, interesting nuances of this particular bird, so I really want to make sure everything's accurate. And of course this is just the roughing in of the birds because I still have the whole background of the church itself to do. So this is just basically place marker, if you will. So I'll know to come back to this bird as you'll see and we'll get all the fun detail. <laughs> Thank you. 
now we're laying in the block work. And what's interesting, you know, of course, I, I tried to lay lines and you can see there's a little bit of um, um, charcoal there, vine charcoal on the left where I was trying to keep the lines to, you know, keep it everything straight as to where these blocks should lie. But keep in mind, these are, this is a very old church and a lot of these bricks or blocks are the masonry are cut stone so they're not exactly um, uniform and so I need to kind of cut myself a little break here and not try to line everything up so specifically but I do need to make sure that they do make sense in the perspective aspect of this piece and that is a challenge for me trust me it's a big challenge but I'm getting in some of the blocks and we're just uh, kind of laying it in adjusting some of the colors because none of these stones are exactly the same and so I want to make sure that I'm, I'm kind of shaking it up a bit. Still on the the little bricks here. Now this is one of the few times you will see me, um, you know, actually actively select a flat or a bright type brush because uh, when doing masonry, <laughs> doing buildings, etc., I find that the flats are awesome brushes to work with. Now it's funny as I. I've been looking at this painting for a long time and just realized I had left out a, this back side of the church. So, uh, you know what? We're putting it in. <laughs> so I'm actually putting on the back side of the church here. And it's funny how I just never saw it until I actually started really studying that reference. And uh, there it was. So you can see I'm trying to bulge out the... Um, the blocks there on the actual original part of the church because it shouldn't be that straight. The masonry is just, it's, it's, you know, it's very, uh, um, rustic and I want to keep it that way. So I've, I've got to kind of mess things up a little bit and pop some more mortar in some areas, etc. but it's coming along. I, I, um, I'm this, this has really got a great feeling for me and it, and it's wonderful to do, um, paintings off of, photos that I've taken in in places like this because it lets me relive the experience and what's interesting is while I've been painting this I have been listening to me uh, actually Mexican jazz music um, and <laughs> and every now and then I mean I would have only one one a day but I'd have a little shot of mezcal it just brought me back to the whole experience of being in Oaxaca which is absolutely a beautiful beautiful city in Mexico.
And more stone masonry. <laughs> so, you know, again, I have to alternate. And there was actually little windows in the sides, and I'm, I'm you know, cut in the, the windows there. Now back to the spire. Um, again, lots of line, lots of perspective. Uh, and it's, it's, it's coming together. I am, again, here I am using, um, I've been flipping around between Venetian red and Mars red. And the Mars red has such a wonderful opacity that, when doing this type of work it just really really shows out well so mars red was really my predominant red color throughout um, this piece and again i'm working with a flat and so this is when i will work with flats because they do work really well when doing um, architectural type paintings i'm enjoying it um, and i'm just trying to make sure my lines are straight just working it working it working it
So I threw up the reference here just to give you an idea of, you know, I'm constantly watching. And you can see how the masonry is all, you know, it's very old. It's very rustic. Um, and the stones are not the same colors. And it's, uh, you know, you're trying to keep it um, varied as much as I can. Now, you know, and there's, there's a nice old patina that's actually on the stucco or the... Um, you know, you can see the black running down. I'm not sure what it is, uh, but I'm not asking questions. <laughs> I'm just trying to paint what I see and wanting to capture uh, the the essence of this painting. And and it's it's really fun. It's neat being able to. It's it's like being back there when I get to paint like this. And um, it was such an em enjoyable trip. And I am going ahead and popping in some more color wherever I can looking for where the patina is on the on the church you can see the black that's running down off the sides so you know I'm probably reloading a brush here at this point not really sure why I'm not painting but here we go and I've you know I've switched to a nice little pointed round it's a very it's a much smaller brush and I'm just trying to keep my lines straight and just looking 
just constantly studying and looking and see where everything must go. And as I move through, I'm going to start, you know, I'm adding a little bit of lighter values on the side because that's where the sun's hitting it. Of course, I have the reference here and the, the reference, having the reference helps. But there's a lot of dark values that still have to go in, all the shadows that I see. Now, folks, I'm curious, what do you, what is your weak point? What is the part that is hardest for you? Like I said, I've been confessing all along that, con that doing this type of perspective work is very, very, very hard for me. What is it that's hard for you? Leave it in the comment section. I'd like to know. Uh, I'd like to know that I'm not alone if it's if it comes with perspective. But um, yeah, this is, you know, still I, I, I love it and I hate it. <laughs> I'm working on this piece and when I think it looks good and then I go, oh my gosh, this is too big or oh no, this is not in the right place. And that's what perspective does to me. It just absolutely plays in my head the whole time I'm working it. And I'm never really certain if everything is correct, you know, and so I'm constantly checking it, checking it, checking it, checking it again. Um, it's crazy when you think of how the, it seems like for the, a lot of the old masters, you know, I look at the work of Sargent and the bill, even the buildings that he did um, when he was in Venice and a lot of the other places when he was in Spain, he did so many uh, beautiful, beautiful buildings. And you're like, just seems so effortless and for him and I I really struggle with this but um, I'd love to have known if, if, if he ever struggled or for any of the masters ever struggled with a, a particular subject matter but anyway I'm putting down the shadows that I see and I'm, I'm using um, uh, Payne's gray and I'm also using the sepia from Sonia that's another good color for because it's a, because of its transparency I can go ahead and pop that in and it and it seems to be working pretty well so that's what I'm putting down here so I got to create those shadows uh, remember folks um, if you're not a subscriber go ahead and subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up on this video and uh, if you're considering uh, maybe you'd like to have a mentor for painting um, hey consider that too and um, join my um, my uh, membership platform and you can look at having a uh, we can paint together sometime and uh, get into all kinds of trouble, I'm sure. Probably, as long, <laughs> hopefully, you're not like, hey, Sue, let's go ahead and paint some more perspective. Yikes! As I just kind of hit the little little loose ends here, I'm about to wrap it up on the actual church before I jump into the pigeons. But I wanted to let everybody know, if you have any questions about anything I've covered in today's video, please don't hesitate. Just go ahead and leave it in the comment section and I'll get to you. I'm pretty good about doing that. And, uh, um, you know, hey, maybe you have some tips on, on how you paint perspective and what makes it easier for you if it's something that you've struggled with. I'd like to know what that is because I got a lot more pictures I'd like to paint that I had from my trip. And I'd love to hear your uh, tips and secrets on painting good perspective.
I'm actually feeling pretty good um, about the actual church painting, so it's now time to get back into the detail of doing the pigeons. So now you can see I have a smaller pointed round brush, and I'm, I'm really, you know, working those wing feathers and, and just getting the detail in as I can. And I'm always having to be a little bit more conscious, reminding myself where's the light, where's the light coming in, so that I can stay consistent on my uh, bird references, since they're, the references for the birds are coming from a lot of different sources. So I've got to kind of stay consistent. So as I paint the birds, I can go in behind them and add a little bit more detail to the actual masonry. And, uh, and I'm working it. So I, I wanted to get those main birds in, working my way up to the top. Obviously, the birds that are off in the distance are not going to have a lot of detail or, st you know, I just want to make represent, you know, they're basically representational. It's the birds that are f flying in as if they're getting ready to land. Um, they're coming in. So they're the ones that are going to have the most detail and be the largest. And overall, that's it. This is my piece of the Sangre de Cristo Church in Oaxaca, Mexico. And I certainly hope that you enjoyed today's video. And if you did, give it a thumbs up and become a, uh, a subscriber if you aren't already. See, you know, it, it was a, it was actually a really fun piece. Um, I, I loved doing all the color. I loved the color of the sky. And being able to include the birds and and the funny thing is i like the little things right i like the iridescence that pigeons have in their in their feathers uh so i got some of the iridescence in there especially in my close-up you know my more closer to you in the proximity here this is a bit of a forced perspective type piece in that you know i have the birds kind of descending and obviously the birds that are closest to us are a little larger and the ones that are further off you know they get smaller as they they drift off um keeping the perspective in my stonework all of that was was a challenge trust me for me this is this is one of the more difficult type of pieces that i would do that you know if it's buildings and straight lines and uh, i go a little nuts and it is uh it's a little crazy for me but i think overall i really am happy with the way this turned out and i hope that you enjoyed today's video and if you did give it a thumbs up and uh hey if you're not a subscriber, go ahead and subscribe. And know that I also have membership programs here on my YouTube platform as well as on Patreon. Now, this piece is not going to be on Patreon, and I have some really interesting things coming up real soon. So uh, as far as doing some live streaming. So stay tuned. You know when that's going to come up. And a lot of that is only going to be available to my YouTube members and to my Patreon members. So jump on those platforms and, uh, and we'll get together real soon and paint. So... From Kingsport, Tennessee, I want to say thank you so much for joining me, and I'll catch you next time. Bye.